All right, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, so I guess I'll uh, reintroduce myself here. Uh, my name is Chris Ullery. I'm a reporter in southeast Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm doing this sort of a series of tutorials uh, using Python programming language in the newsroom. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, we're going to walk you through how to use something very simple, um, the glob. Uh, library to read in multiple files in one directory and concatenate them all into a single database or data frame, pandas data frame, uh, in uh, just a few relatively short lines of code. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing that we need is to import, import pandas as pd and we will then also be importing uh, glob uh, we'll just glob, we'll just leave it as is, and put both of these. Okay, there we go. Now the first thing, um, what, what glob does is it uses, uh, I guess sort of just regular expressions. It's looking to collect um, only certain files that uh, you're going to assign to variables um, in one folder, uh, and it's going to go through all of them and get everything that you want, uh, at, you know, at every individual file that you want, uh, and uh, store them as it loops through. And then once it has all of the files you need, it we can we write another line to um, concatenate them all in. Now the most important thing is to make sure that uh, the files that you're using <coughs> are all formatted the same. Uh, and I've actually already formatted the files that I'm going to use today, and it's the uh, Pennsylvania Department of State Voter Export. The um, reason I'm using this one is that it is a collection of every single uh, individual voter, uh, some you know basic demographic information, as well as voting history uh, for any registered voter, um, and each file is a separate county. So if we just want to do one county, you don't need to use GLOB for this, but if you want to, you know, sort of do a, a wider analysis at like a statewide level, then this is where glob is particularly helpful. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to bring in a variable, uh, and the first thing uh, that you need for that is the path, and this is going to be a very broad path. Uh, you'll hit R for read, and then you'll put in your string for the path. Mine is under revamped election maps, uh, and then I need another. Um, uh, it's the actual all files, and you can name them whatever you want, of course. Um, but this is sort of like once your the path gets you to the directory you want to use, and then this all files is going to be the ending to that path. And just really quickly, I'll show you what this would look like. Read CSV, revamped election maps. Um, so this is everything that's in there. Uh, of course, we have Adams, Allegheny, Armstrong, and it goes on and on and on like that. So we want to concatenate everything, and as you can see, we can see the ending of the path here. Oh, whoops. <coughs> we can see the ending of the path here, revamped election maps. Uh, but, you know, we can't say, we can't, you know, we want to do all of these, and we can't just type in Adams, Allegheny, and all that. So we need to sort of have a wild card in there, which is going to be the asterisk side. Uh, let's real quick here, because I already forgot what it was. Okay, so we're going to use the asterisk sign to replace the county name underscore revamp.csv. So that will be our final thing here, underscore revamped.csv. So whenever this goes through, uh, let's see here. What we're going to do is we're going to put in glob.glob path plus revamp.csv. So it's going to go into the revamped election maps uh, directory, and then it's going to find anything in that directory that has some sort of string at the start, but ends with underscore revamp.csv. So the next thing that we'll need to do is we're going to make uh, an empty list. Full revamped. And it's just an empty list, that's all. For file, we're going to make a for loop here, for file, in all files, and that's our final path here, colon, oh, wrong button, colon, 
We're filing all files. DF, we're going to store the initial read as a CSV, a data frame uh, a variable, excuse me. PD, read, CSV. And we'll do file, comma. And I'm just going to do this. This is very specific for what I'm, I'm using here, but I'm just going to set the header to zero. And we're going to use call columns equals, and for this one, I just want uh, the municipality. And every single one of these has a county one variable. It has something to do with, why, with the way I had to sort of organize these, so won't bother getting into that at the moment, but um, there's, a, there's a reason for that. But I specifically right now just want these two columns. Um, and, oh, actually, you know what, we're going to do party code. So we'll have the, um, the municipality, the county, and the current registra uh, party registration for each voter out of all these files. So it's going to save that as the DF, as the uh, data frame variable. Uh, once it's made that first one, it's going, we're going to write another line for full revamped. Ah. That's our list. And append with df. So as it loops through, it's going to go to, say, Adams first. It's going to append our empty list with df. And it's going to go back through and go to Allegheny. And then it's going to do the full, it's going to append it to the bottom of that one. It's going to go on like that until it reaches the very end. Then, when we get to the very end, we're going to store everything as df2. PD concat, concatenate, full revamped, sort equals false. And I'm going to get rid of this, and this is, oh, whoops, use, oh, okay, there's no underscore there, okay, <laughs> that's what I did, okay, now this is going to take a minute. I'll probably jump ahead in the video here once this is finished, because uh, we are talking about about 9 million voters, I think, something like that. Uh, and um, not every... I, I chose these columns here because it's the way I organized it. I know that every single file has a municipality, this county one thing, and a party code. The reason why it's county one is because a ca some files, for some reason, have a, a separate county column in it, and some don't. Um, and then there's another one that's like home county, and every single one has that. Uh, but because of the way I organized it, I couldn't actually put, like, you know, county and home county. It was a whole big thing. So, anyway. That has uh, finished up here. Oh, went into markdown mode by accident. Okay. So it is finished up, and let's see what we have. DF head. There we go. And df2.shape, let's see what we have here. We have a little over 9 million, three columns here. And we can then say uh, df2, let's do a party code uh, value counts. There we go. Now there's, um, let's see here, this length, uh, this thing here. So we're looking at value counts for every single party. There's 378 separate codes. Uh, the two most popular, of course, are D and R for Democrat, Republican. Excuse me, there's no affiliation, um, or no... Shoot, you know, i got to go back through and find out what that NF is, but it's irrelevant for this purpose. So we've already, what we've done here is we've incorporated every single uh, fo uh, folder, um, and we can test that by doing a group by method. And let's just do um, county one, see what we have here. Okay, good. 3,200 or 3,527 rows. Um, just to make sure it is in fact getting all of the counties. Uh, there are 67 counties in Pennsylvania. So if I do a value count of all the county values, that list should be 67 rows long, and it is. Uh, and <coughs> we are missing about 14 towns. Again, that's a thing about my formatting that I'm still working on, which is why I'm not ready to do that video yet.
but uh, we're going to group by second one here so we can see that the municipalities are in there. Um, if you're doing a, a group by a multiple uh, uh, column headers, you need to put it into brackets for, um, uh, I guess that's a, a list, uh, and just separate with comma, municipality, and now this list is going to grow even larger. There's about 2,000, 25, or 2,600 municipalities, I think. Here we are. So altogether, we have a 30,852 row list uh, that we can then transfer to a new data frame. We can start new analysis, and you know we can go we can do a bunch of stuff with it. But uh, that is uh, that's going to do it for this one. It's a very simple code, um, but it it can save you a lot of time. Uh, and um, in fact it has <laughs> for me quite a lot. So anyway, I hope this is very helpful. I'm going to try and uh, get back into doing these uh, this year, um, hopefully like once a week at least. Um, and uh, yeah, right now I'm just stuck on election data, so I guess we'll probably focus on this for a bit. Uh, anyway, thanks very much. Bye.